Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about cross-sectional classification according to Eurocode 1993-1-1. In the Eurocode, we have this chapter 5.5, 5, uh, which in the clause 5.5.2 5, classification is explained. Four classes of cross-sections are defined. Cross-section class 1, 2, 3, and 4. In cross-section class 1, the cross-section has enough capacity to uh, behave in plastic manner before it starts to buckle. And then cross-section class 2, uh, they can develop the plastic moment resistance but have limited rotational capacity. Class 3, uh, they cannot behave as a plastic hinge and uh, local buckling is liable to prevent development of the plastic moment resistance. In cross-section class 4, the sections are those in which local buckling will occur before the attainment of yield stress in one or more parts of the cross-section. So for cross-section class 4, you need to follow Eurocode 1993-1-5 and the effective area, the effective uh, section modulus should be used for calculation. According to this statement, in table 5.2, we have three sheets that we can find out what kind of cross-section class we have. So here, in sheet 1 out of 3 and sheet 2, uh, the third one is relevant to hollow circular sections and also angles. I didn't put them here. Here you can see that uh, in sheet number one, the elements that are uh, given by the, the width of C are connected at both ends. We can compare sheet two with sheet one. Here you can see that C is the distance between the uh, root of the web connected to the flange in one side and the root connected to the other flange at the other end. So here this web is connected at both ends. You can assume it's a 3D element. So here we are talking about the web. The same for the wellet section and then for the box section you can see that uh, C is the distance between both ends of the connected part and at both ends you have uh, a connection to the other part all cases are the same when it comes to sheet number two we can see that uh, this c which is the width of the part is from the connection point to the free teeth for example if you look at this part here we can see that this element is connected from one end and the other end is completely free as a result, it is more susceptible to buckle when it comes to the compression. First of all, we need to find out what kind of part we have. And after that, we can check if the uh, condition is met to be class 1, class 2, or class 3. If none of these are fulfilled, then we can summarize that the cross section is from class 4. As we can see, in all cases, we need to check C over T. In the previous video, we went through that uh, B over T or C over T should be less than a certain value. And the value are given always according to a parameter epsilon, which is relevant to a steel grade. You can calculate epsilon according to the equation, which is S square root of 235 divided by F5. Or you can uh, find out from the table given, for example, for 235, it is 1, for 275, it is 0 0.92, and so on. The next is to understand if the part is under bending, pure bending, or is under pure compression, or it's under partial bending and partial compression. After that, we can check what kind of value we need to use. Let's start with one example to understand it better. Assume we have a column which the cross section is a hollow section. All of these, let's assume that are plate with the width of 150 times 8 millimeter. And assume that the element is under compression. So it's important we understand what kind of uh, 
part we are talking about if the part is under compression then it's one story if the part is under bending moment that then it's another story so in this case uh, all parts are connected at both ends and we just need to check one of them here we can see that this element or this element both are connected at both ends here c is this value and the thickness is the thickness of the plate so c for all parts is 150 millimeter and the thickness is 8 millimeter and the part is subjected to compression because it is not under any bending moment it's completely under compression so in that case it doesn't matter what uh, bending moment axis is if we come back to sheet number one you can see that the axis of bending is given but in this case it doesn't matter because the part is subjected to completely under compression so the only thing is selecting part subject to compression and the values that we need to consider are these three values 33 epsilon 38 epsilon and 40 and 42 epsilon in our example let's assume that f5 is 235 that it gives us the uh, epsilon to be one so for class one the limit is as we noticed 33 point, 33 times epsilon which is 33 for class two the limit is 38 epsilon and for class three the limit is 42 epsilon which is 42 and now in our case the value of c over t is 150 divided by 8 which is 18.75 and it's less than 33 as a result the part is from class 1 as far as we have four plates all the same dimensions uh, all of them are with class 1 and so this column is from class 1 some notes here uh, if you have a welded section the minimum distance with the same thickness is always c it means that for example if we have this kind of section to be welded from here and here c is taken as this distance that part is going to be under buckling local buckling issue for example so that's for a column which is under completely compressive load now let's have a cross section which is i section to be used as a beam the flange is going to be 150 or 200 with thickness of 12 and let's say the web is 300 with the thickness of 8 mm and we can assume we have a weld here with the throat thickness to be let's say 5 mm so it means that if we look at the weld closely this distance is 5 mm as a result the leg will be 5 square root of 2 7.1 mm so if we increase the load in this case uh, the stress distribution will be maximum compression on the top flange and maximum tension in the bottom flange so if we look at the cross section from the side and it's under positive bending moment then when we start to increase the bending moment the stress distribution would be like this and when it is m by which is the corresponding bending moment making the furthest stress in the cross section to be sigma y after that if we increase the bending moment now it starts to be partial plastic until we have the cross section to be completely plastic theoretically now if we look at the stress in the flange the stress in the flange will be completely constant so now we can see that the flange is under uh, completely under compression there is no tension there is no bending moment even though the stress is uh, produced by bending moment originally and now if we look at the flange this is 200 millimeter and the thickness is 12 millimeter now we need to find out which uh, table or which sheet of that table should be used 
Here we can see that we are dealing with this part which is connected only from one side and the other side is the tip is free. So for calculation of C, uh, you can ignore the weld and calculate the distance without considering the weld size which is conservative or you can be very accurate to calculate exactly what C is. So C will be 200 minus 8 millimeter divided by 2 minus 7.1 millimeter, the leg of the weld, which is 88.9 millimeter. And T for this part is 12 millimeter. This is one part that we need to check. So remember that always we need to check all the parts. We have another part which is web. We will come to that. First, let's check the flange. So here, this is our flange and the flange is under compression. So we just need to come to this part and check these values, 9, 10, and 14 epsilon part subject to compression. And the limits are class one, class two, and class three. 9, 10, and 14 epsilon. And assuming that Fy is 235, epsilon is 1. So it will be 9, 10, and 14. Now C over T is 88.9 divided by 12, which is 7.4. And it's less than 9. As a result, this is class 1. Remember that this is only one part. You have to check all parts of the cross section to understand if the cross section is class one, two, or three, or even four. Now this is for the flange. Uh, the flange is done. The other side of the flange is the same. Now we need to go through the web. If we look at the moment distribution for the, or the stress distribution for the web, we can see that half of it can be under compression and half of it will be under tension. And also the part is connected at both ends. So here, this is our part that we are going to study. And this part is connected at both ends. This is C and the thickness is, was it eight millimeter? Yes. And C can be calculated according to the 300 minus two times 7.1, 286 millimeter. And part is subjected to be under bending moment, pure bending moment. Then from here, pure bending moment, and the values are 72, 83, 124. Limits, class one, class two, class three, and they are 72, 83, and 124 epsilon. As epsilon is one, 72, 83, and 124, C over T in our case is 286 divided by 8, which is 35.7, and it's less than 72. As a result, web is also from class 1. As far as web is class 1 and flange is class 1, we can say that the cross section class is 1. Now let's use the same cross section as a column. So if we have the same cross section, but this time it is going to be used as a column. So again, we need to check two parts for the flange. It doesn't change because flange was under compression, even though it was under bending moment. So part subject to compression and it was class one. But for the web, this time the limits are different. For our case, C over T in this case is 35.7 but limits will be different because if we come back to the table we can see that now the part is subjected to be under compression so then 33 38 and 42 are the values that should be considered for cross-section classification so limits are 33 38 and 42 so this time c over t is not less than 33 as a result, it's not class one. C over T is less than 38. As a result, it is class two. So web is from class two and flange is from class one. As a result, the entire cross section is the board's cross section that you calculate is class two.
if you are using some uh, tables for example this uh, website eurocodeapplied.com you can find out uh, cross sections and use the cross section that you are looking for ip hea heb for example and also what kind of steel you have and then hit calculate now here at the end of the table you can see that the cross section classification is given here you can see that flanges in uniform compression due to actual force or bending moment and these two are the different values for web in pure bending or web in pure compression and always compression is more critical it means that web can be cross section class one and if it is under bending moment but when it comes to pure compression then it can be a higher class the vice versa might not happen here we can see that for example hea 100 is one in both cases and if we go down here we can see that for example hea 500 in bending it is uh, class one but in compression it's class two when it comes to hea 600 it can be in bending class one and in compression it can be class three even for example for higher values you can see that hea 650 up to 1000 for bending they are a steel class one but in the compression they are class four that's the end of this video i hope you uh understood correctly what kind of class section classification means according to eurocode 1993-11 in those tables we also have a partial bending moment and partial compression that in the next video i will go through one example to explain how it should be used thank you for watching see you next time bye